from you to me. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated and uh, turn with me to Colossians uh, chapter 1. We're going to begin in verse 25. Now, I am using tonight, I know I normally teach out of the New King James, but tonight I'm using the Living Bible, which is a paraphrase translation. And I realize probably most of you don't have the Living Bible with you, but we're going to be putting the uh, Living Bible on the screen so you can follow along there with me as I read. So I'm going to begin reading in Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. Uh, God has sent me to help his church. This is Paul writing. God has sent me to help his church and to tell his secret plan to you Gentiles. He has kept this secret for centuries and generations past. But now at last it has pleased him to tell it to those who love him and live for him. And the riches and glory of his plan are for you Gentiles too. And this is the secret that Christ in your hearts is your only hope of glory. Amen. <laughs> you know, it's not as complicated as uh, it's made sometimes. It's, it's Christ in us. It's all about having a relationship with the Lord. It's all about having opened our hearts up to Jesus and invited him in to take charge of our lives and to give us a new life in him. That's where it all begins. And if we haven't done that, we haven't gotten to first base. <laughs> you know, we're, uh, we're, we're not making progress. We may think we're making progress, but until we have Christ living in us, we haven't really begun to make any progress uh, with our lives. It's all with that new beginning, that new birth that begins by inviting Jesus Christ into one's heart. And, and this uh, Christ in our hearts is our only hope. Now, biblical hope is a strong word. It's not a weak word like the world uses hope. You know, you'll tell them something positive and they'll say, well, I hope so. You know, like, well, maybe that. But uh, if you'll look up the uh, Greek word for hope and also look up the Hebrew word, you'll find that the word hope in, from a biblical perspective is a strong word and it means confident expectation. And so this means that uh, it's your only confident expectation of glory. The word glory, I, I think the best definition for glory is uh, evidence of the majestic presence of the Lord. I like that definition for the word glory. So that's your only confident expectation of having evidence of the majestic presence of the Lord in your lives is to have Christ in you. Amen. You say, well, how do you have Christ in you? You simply surrender to Him, repent and turn to Him and invite Him to come into your heart and be your personal Lord and Savior. He's done the hard part when He took our judgment and the punishment for our sins on the cross at Calvary. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He took the wages for our sins, the judgment for our sins. He took our place on that cross so that we could have eternal life. And the moment a person accepts Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior, Christ dwells in them. And uh, some of heaven comes and lives in us. You are carriers of heaven if you have Christ in you. Amen. You have evidence of the majestic presence of God in your life. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah and get happy here. Let's go on to the next verse. Verse 28. So everywhere we go, we talk about Christ to all who will listen, warning them and teaching them as well as we know how. We want to be able to present each one to God, perfect because of what Christ has done for each of them. You know, that work that Jesus did for us was a perfect work. Amen. <laughs> that act of love when he went to the cross and suffered and died for our sins, that was a perfect work. Perfect love cast out fear. Amen. And you might say, well, I'm not perfect. I, listen, when you walk in love, that's a perfect work, God working through you. Love is perfect. And whenever you yield to his love, then you're flowing in perfection. Amen. Verse 29, this is my work, and I can do it only because Christ's mighty energy is at work within me. Paul recognized the only way he was going to accomplish anything was through the energy of Jesus Christ working in him. And it's the same with us today. We need to be sure we're following Jesus that, you know, Jesus wants to live through us. 
And we are His hands, we are His feet. We can speak His words to lost and hurting people. And you don't have to go very far to find hurting people. They're everywhere. But Jesus wants to love them through us. Let's go to chapter 2. I wish you could know how much I have struggled in prayer for you and for the church at Laodicea and for many other friends, for my many other friends who have never known me personally. This is what I have asked of God for you, that you will be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love and that you will have the rich experience of knowing Christ with real certainty and clear understanding. I like that, being knit together by strong ties of love. God wants us all in the body of Christ to be knit together by that agape love. Amen. You know, something that's knit, knitted together can't be pulled apart very easily. You know, sometimes today we see people getting offended so easily at the least little thing. That's not being knitted together in love. If we're knitted together in love, you, just, you, you can't just rip that out. You can't rip that apart. Being knitted together in the strength of the love of God is something powerful. And that's what God wants for His body. That's what He wants for the local church and for the body of Christ all over the world. Amen. We need to put aside this being offended easy. You know, Jesus warned about it in, in the last days. He said, the love of many, and he used the word agape. So he's talking about the church there because only the church has agape love. That's this new kind of love that Jesus introduced to the world. He said, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this all will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. And he used that word agape. He introduced this new Jesus kind of love, this agape love to the world. And he warned us in Matthew 24 that uh, talking about in these last days that the agape love of many would wax cold. So we need to be sure we're fervent in our love, that unconditional love that we have for one another. And also that we even love our enemies. That's the only way we're going to win the world. Everybody ought to have a, a, a coals of fire ministry. You know, when someone's done, done something that's unpleasing to you, that's when you need to get the coals of fire ministry out. And you say, Lord, what can I do for that person to just love them so much that, that it'll be like dumping hot coals of fire on them? They won't be able to deny that I'm loving them with the love of Jesus. And that will convict their hearts and there'll be a, a, a fervent desire to repent on their part. Amen. Well, that, they still have to make that decision. But when you get that coals of fire ministry going, that's what can uh, help lead them to repentance and and to a walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Amen. So he wants us to be in, he says that you will be encouraged and knit together by strong ties of love. Amen. That's why we ought to come to church. You know, you can, um, and thank God for the internet ministry, and I thank God for television ministry and so forth, but you can't get those strong ties of love with each other except by coming and meeting together and getting to know one another, you know, other than just a face on a screen, you get to know one another. You knit together in love. And so we should uh, forsake not the assembling together. Thank God, I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight because you're uh, in church. Thank God you're here being knit together in love. Amen? He says, uh, uh, for God's secret plan now at last made known is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the mighty untapped treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Oh, glory to God. It's all in Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, I, I just want to know Jesus more and more and be closer and closer to Jesus every day of my life. I want to be closer to him today than I was yesterday. I want to be closer to Jesus tomorrow than I am today. Can you say amen to that? Is that the way you feel? I believe you do. Verse 4, I'm saying this because I am afraid that someone may fool you with smooth talk. You know, there's a lot of smooth talking people out there. You know <laughs> Verse uh, 5, for though I am far away from you, my heart is with you. Happy because you're getting along so well. Happy because of your strong faith in Christ. Amen. But, you know, 
Faith means to tr trust. It means trusting in God. And uh, Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's the title deed. Amen. We're joint heirs with Christ. Glory to God. And, and, and faith is our title deed to everything that we've inherited, and we'll find it in the Word of God. Amen. Described in the Word of God. You know, when you uh, buy a piece of a real estate, uh, you get a plat, and that describes the land and so forth. This is our plat. It does more than just describe the, the boundaries. It describes everything on that land. Amen. This is our, this is the plat. This is the uh, deed description of the uh, property that God has given us. Amen. And uh, he says, uh, for, and, and verse 6, and now just as you trusted Christ to save you, trust him too for each day's problems. Live in vital uh, union with him. You know, this is so important. There are a lot of people out there that trusted in God for salvation, may have answered an altar call and thought, well, now I'm saved. That's it. But no, he wants us to trust in him for in every day of our lives. Amen. That's the key to victory. What started when we accepted him and he entered our hearts needs to continue every day as we walk with him. Can you shout hallelujah? Can somebody give me an amen here tonight? Amen. And we need to realize we just need to take it a day at a time. Now, we need to make plans. And I always uh, say this, you know, we ought to plan our lives as though we're going to be here for the duration. But we ought to live every day as though Christ were coming back that day. Because no man knows the day or the hour. And God has created us to be able to live one day at a time. He has not created us to be able to live two or three days at a time or a week at a time. We can handle today's burdens. But if we try to take tomorrow's imagined burdens and tomorrow's problems and dump them all on ourselves every day, then we get worn down. And you know, a lot of the things that people are concerned about uh, and maybe worried about concerning tomorrow never happen. I, I read a, serv uh, a study that said a full 95% of the things people worry about never happen anyway. And you know, Jesus, he said, uh, he said, don't worry about tomorrow. He said, there's enough problems today. Don't worry about tomorrow. In other words, he was saying, take it a day at a time. And he's with us. Amen. You know, if you take tomorrow's burdens on you, uh, and then you can't handle today's burdens because you're worn down by something that may not even be real. Amen. So let's live it a day at a time. I love that song. One day at a time, sweet Jesus. You know the song? Don't you like that? Amen. Hallelujah. I'll spare you. I won't sing the rest of it. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. Though. Verse 7, let your roots grow down into him and draw up nourishment from him. See, you know, as believers, we need to not only grow up in Him, we need to be sure we're growing down in Him, rooted and grounded in His unconditional love for us and letting that love flow through us to others. So not only are we growing up, we're growing down, rooted and grounded in love. And that's the key to walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Rooted and grounded in His love. You know, when you're, when, when you're rooted and grounded in His love, uh, in Ephesians uh, chapter 3, it tells us that He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask or think through His power that is working through us. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you're rooted in love, the power of that love is going to work up through your life and out to those around you. Come on now. Shout hallelujah. Somebody give me an amen. See that you go on growing in the Lord and become strong and vigorous in the truth you were taught. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all He has done. You know, that's the truth. We need to be full of joy and thanksgiving. It's our society, we're conditioned in our society a lot by the media and, 
and so forth to complain, to see the worst in everything. Uh, we're, we're conditioned to, to uh, give bad reports. But you know what? We ought to look for the good. Amen. And uh, we ought to let our lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving and be thankful for what God has given us. I posted this. I shared this picture that one ministry had put on Facebook and I shared it on my timeline because I thought it was so good. It showed this, uh, just the feet of this person, obviously in a very poor country. And the shoes that they had, they had made from plastic bottle, water bottles they had mashed flat and put some straps on it to tie it around their ankles. And, and just looking at those feet with the only shoes were the plastic mashed flat plastic water bottles. And the, uh, the topic posted uh, above and underneath that was, now tell me again, uh, uh, what is your complaint? <laughs> you know, I don't have any complaints. I thank God. For, we need to thank God for everything He's given us. And you know, when all this is over, we're going to heaven. Amen. We're going to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on now, let's get happy. Let your lives overflow with joy and thanksgiving for all He has done. We, we got that song, you know, we're, new song we're singing, Pray Don't Worry. And in Philippians chapter 4, God has given us an alternative to worrying. He says, be anxious for nothing. In, in Philippians chapter 4, I believe it's verse 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ, in Christ Jesus. So that's the key. Don't worry, pray. Amen. Glory to God. The most powerful one of all, the creator of heaven and earth dwells in you, Christ in you, and he's for you and he's not against you. A verse in Romans chapter 8 says, if God is for you, who can be against you? That's verse, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 32. If God is for you, who can be against you? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give you all things? Glory to God. That's the one who's dwelling in you. Amen. Verse 8, don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies, their wrong and shallow answers built on men's thoughts and ideas instead of what Christ has said. You know, um, our nation, I, I hate to say this, but it's the truth, our nation is full of believers. Now, not all believers like this. I don't believe you're like this. But uh, the, our nation is full of nominal Christians who say that they're Christians, but they don't bother to take the time to find out what Christ has said. This is His Word. If we really believe in Him, we want to know what He said. His words are marvelous. They're wonderful. One description, uh, they came back and gave a report of Jesus. They said, no, no man ever talked like this man. His words are different from the philosophies of the world. You know, the world will tell you if you've got a broken heart, you can't ever get it healed. You'll always have a broken heart. But Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. You see, He doesn't talk like men of the world talk. He is the Son of God. Amen. And His words are different. We need to find out what He says about our lives, about our situations, about the solutions to our problems. We find it in Christ. And if we want to find it in Christ, we need to know what Christ said. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. I'm getting excited here tonight. I believe we're going to see a great awakening in America, but we're not going to see it unless we receive a return to the word of God is the absolute truth. I know when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, I also accepted the word of God as the truth. I'm going with God's word. Amen. The world will tell you if you were ever an alcoholic, you'll always be an alcoholic. I don't believe that. I was set free by the power of the Holy Spirit. I haven't had a drink since I accepted Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. He delivered me. He made a new man out of me. I'm going with the Word of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah in here. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. The, the world will tell, oh, you'll never be able to get over it. It'll always be there. You'll always be, you'll always have that grief. You'll, you'll never, you know, just accept it. You ah, we don't sorrow as the world sorrows. Glory to God. We know Jesus, the Almighty One, the Everlasting One. He lives in our heart. With God, all things are possible. There's nothing impossible for Jesus Christ. Amen. The only thing that's impossible is that he, that he would lie. He is not a man that he would lie. You can count on the Word of God. Hey, it's the truth. Somebody say amen. amen. Glory to God. Verse 9, for, for in Christ there is all of God in a human body. So you have everything when you have Christ. And you're filled with God through your union with Christ. It's Jesus who fills us with the Holy Spirit. Amen. He is the highest ruler with authority over every power. We need to believe that. We need to use the name of Jesus the way God intended us to use it. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. We need to believe that. He's given us authority. We can use His name. Serpents and scorpions rep represent demonic assignments against us and our loved ones. We can trample on them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'll tell you, it works on... He's concerned about our everyday lives, things that may... You may think, well, why would God bother with that? He loves us. Shar and I were on an elevator in India, and, and, and they have some of the hotels, real small elevators, and we were jammed on there with people. And they were having power outages, and we were going up that elevator, and a power outage hit. And uh, all the power went off, lights went off, and we're jammed, pressed up against strange strangers we don't know <laughs> in this little elevator. The uh, air getting kind of stale in there. And sometimes these power outages would go on for hours. And Shar uh, didn't like that. And she said, shouted out there in the middle of India in that elevator. She said, in the name of Jesus, elevator open. The lights came on, the door popped open, and we walked out. <laughs> I mean, it just happened just like that. I'm telling you, there's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. We were, uh, I was preaching a street meeting. God opened the door for us to go all the way across the nation of Bulgaria. That's when... We first met Eliad or Elijah, who was here a couple of weeks ago at the church. And this was, oh, 20-something years ago, right after they'd come out of communism. And we were ministering in a street meeting, and there was about a 1,000 people out there just gathered because it was so unusual for someone for the United States to be there in that country. And this... Man came up to me, uh, was, was, I was trying to start preaching, and this uh, man was drunk, and uh, he just got right in my face, and he was yelling and stuff in Bulgarian and all, and I, I couldn't hardly get started preaching because he was so disruptive. And I thought, you know, I have the authority to bind in the, in the name of Jesus. And I looked at that man, and you know, God loves him, and uh, I, I loved him. But I didn't want him interrupting that meeting. I looked at him. He was just as close, like half a foot from my face. And I looked him right in the eyes and I said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. Shut up in Jesus' name. And you know, he did not say another word. He sat there and listened to that whole message. And nearly all of those people, about a thousand people, raised their hands to accept Jesus. And he was one of them that accepted Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. You know, we need to use the name of Jesus and know that God has given us the use of His name. Amen. There's authority in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now we need to use it according to the Word of God flowing in His love and, the, and flowing with the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, that meeting was interesting. At the end of the meeting, a lady, a newspaper reporter came up and wanted to interview me. And I said, sure, you know, I just talked to her standing there. And uh, uh, I told her all about what was going on there. And uh, uh, she said, well, what's going to happen to all these people because of where, where are they going to, what's going to happen to them after you leave? And I said, ma'am, it's, it's not 
of I'm not what it's about. This is all about Jesus. And uh, Christ is living in these people's hearts now. And uh, when I'm back in the United States, uh, Christ is going to be in their hearts. It's not about Tom Battle. This is about Jesus Christ. And these people have been born again and saved. And Jesus is going to be in their hearts long after I'm gone from here. And, you know, the people in that group were concerned. And they said, what that woman, what, what she asked you, what were you saying? And I, I told them, they said, oh, this is, we, this is, you shouldn't have given her an interview, they told me. They said, uh, this woman uh, uh, is a reporter for the newspaper that has the communist leanings. And she's going to... Uh, put a bad report in there about the church. And I said, well, I said, I don't believe that because tears swelled up in her eyes while I was talking to her. I believe she got saved, is what I told the you know, group. But I said, let's pray about it. So we held hands and prayed in a circle, you know, and prayed that she would report what I really told her. And I've got a copy of the newspaper article in Bulgarian, and I've had it translated into English. And reading that newspaper, uh, article you could get saved. It presented the gospel of Jesus Christ and she she printed a very favorable article and it went out all over this large city uh, there in Bulgaria. So you know God is powerful. The name of Jesus is powerful. Amen. Glory to God. Verse 11. When you came to Christ He set you free from your evil desires not by a bodily operation of circumcision but by a spiritual operation the baptism of your souls. For in baptism you see how your old evil nature died with him and was buried with him. And then you came up out of death with him into a new life because you trusted the word of the mighty God who raised Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. I thank God that I'm a new creation. We need to see ourselves as new creations. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, uh, if it... Behold, if anyone is in Christ, uh, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Thank God. You know, we don't need to let our, uh, those old sins that we've repented of, we don't need to let it drag us down into a depression. Our slate has been wiped clean by the blood of Jesus when we turn to him as our personal Lord and Savior. And if we make any mistakes after being saved, all we have to do is repent and tell him we're sorry and his forgiveness is there. He went to the cross and paid that price for all the sins that ever have or ever will be committed. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. A new life because you trusted the word. There it is. We need to, we need to be students of the word of God. The word of God is the foundation of our faith. Uh, Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God builds our faith up and helps us to trust in God. Amen. Verse 13, I'm going to finish up. You were dead in sins, and your sinful desires were not yet cut away. Then He gave you a share in the very life of Christ, for He forgave all your sins and Blotted out the charges proved against you. Now let me just talk about that blotting out those charges against you. You know, sometimes you, you might think, well, blotting out, like if you were blotting out something, it might be a big old smudge or something, or like a, a black smudge there, or a bunch of a liquid paper slopped on it. No, this is like blotted out, like hitting a delete button that would, uh, on your computer that will totally remove that sin. Not only that, it removes it off the hard drive of eternity. It's nowhere to be found. <laughs> Glory to God, it cannot be retrieved. That's what this blotting out means. When your sins are blotted out by Jesus Christ, it's cleansed. It's not in storage. It's not on file anywhere. I told a story, but it bears retelling about this uh, man. Uh, he was uh, given an assignment at a new church and it was, I believe it's, it's a true story. I believe it was in the Philippines, as I recall. And they told him, said, there's a woman in the church that she has visions of Jesus and talks with Jesus uh, regularly. And, uh, you know, he, he said, well, I'm, he thought, I'm just going to kind of check this woman out. So uh, when he met the woman, he said, I, I understand that you have visions of Jesus and that you have uh, uh, 
you, you, you see Jesus in visions and talk with him. She said, that's true, Pastor, I do. And he said, well, I, I, wanna, uh, I want you to ask Jesus something the next time uh, you talk with him. Uh, ask him about that uh, secret sin I never told anybody about that I committed when I was in Bible school. Ask Jesus about that. And so time went on, and uh, it was uh, after a service, he walked up to that woman again, and he said, well, did you ask Jesus about that, that secret sin I committed when I was in Bible school? And uh, she said, I, sh I sure did. And he said, well, what did Jesus say? And she said, Jesus said he couldn't remember it. And you know, that's the truth. When we've repented of our sins, the Lord doesn't remember it. So we need to put it out of our memory. Amen. You know, when you look up uh, a, a forgetting in the uh, Webster's Dictionary, the second definition for forgetting means to put it out of your mind. And when the devil tries to bring it back, we need to just put it out of our minds, realizing God has forgotten it. We've been forgiven. We don't have to walk around in that guilt for the rest of our lives. Come on now. Hallelujah. This is the gospel. This is the good news. For he, for he forgave all your sins, verse 14, and blotted out the charges proved against you, the list of his commandments which you had not obeyed. He took uh, this list of sins and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. In this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse you of sin. And God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross where your sins were all taken away. Oh, there's not, a, there's not any better news than that. Our sins have been taken away. We've been given a new lease on life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you say amen? amen? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we thank you for this word that does not return void. Lord, I pray that we'll take it with us in our hearts, those watching by internet, Lord, that this word will live in their hearts as well, Lord, and that we'll walk in this freedom that you've given us by your works on the cross at Calvary. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for accepting the works of Jesus at Calvary. We know you did because you raised him from the dead and he is seated at your right hand, ever making intercession for us. And he also lives in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want to ask everyone with your head still bowed in an attitude of prayer and with a reverence for God to look into your hearts. We ask the Internet audience to do this as well. And ask yourself this question. Have I truly accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior? Have I repented of my sins and turned away from the way of the world and turned to Him and asked Him to come into my heart to be my personal Lord and Savior? Have I done that with sincerity of heart and faith? If you're saying, you know, to be honest with God and with myself, I'm not sure I've done that. I'm not, I'm not even sure I would go to heaven if I were to die tonight. I'm not sure I'm right with God. I need, I need prayer. I, I want to be led in a prayer to accept Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. If that's you, I want you to lift your hand up high wherever you are, whether you're here in the church or whether you're watching by Internet down the street or on the other side of the earth. Just lift your hand up high and then you can put it back down. You know, God sees your hand wherever you are. Praise God. I want to ask those here just to let's all stand to our feet and let's say this prayer, even if you've been saved for many, many years, let's say this prayer to encourage those within the hearing of our voices who may be saying it for the very first time. We know that a, a lot of people are being saved uh, over the Internet watching this church's services, and we, uh, we give uh, God all the glory for that. But let's say this prayer together. Internet audience, say this with us. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent for all my sins and ask your forgiveness. I open my heart up to your Son, Jesus Christ. And I say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my personal Lord and Savior. I receive you now. I declare that I'm saved. I'm not hoping to be saved. I am saved. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm forgiven. I have a new lease on life. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let's give him a, let's give the Lord applause and thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated, and uh, if you need a personal prayer in any area of your life, uh, we're going to be praying for you up front here. And we ask you just to come up and let uh, me or one of the prayer partners uh, pray for you. And if you're not coming up for prayer, just stretch out your hand towards those that are coming up for prayer and just uh, believe God uh, with them, uh, that God was answering that prayer according to His Word. Amen. Internet audience, we want to remind you that there is a, a prayer request button that you can click on and send us your prayer request. We pray over them every Tuesday in the intercessory prayer meeting here at the church. Uh, also, we have six free books that... If you'll click on the free books button, uh, we'll get those to you and, and you'll receive directions on, on how to get those free of charge. For those here in the service, we have them in paperback form free of charge on this table as you go out on the right. Uh, also, if you have a praise report, especially if you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, click on that praise report button and let us hear from you. We just want to give God the glory and rejoice with the angels in heaven over what God is doing in your life. God bless you. The service is not over. We're going to be going off with the audio for a few minutes while we pray for some people up front here. God bless you.
Amen. Hallelujah. Just stretch out a hand toward that central camera and let's pray for the internet audience. And Lord, we just ask you to bless those watching by internet. We ask you to meet their every need according to your word. Lord, any that are sick, we ask that you would touch them with your healing power. There's no distance in prayer, Lord. We declare by your stripes they were healed. Lord, any that are fighting depression, we, we command that depression to go now in the name of Jesus. Amen. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Let's stand to our feet. And uh, don't forget that uh, this Sunday is Father's Day. And uh, we're going to have a special Father's Day service here. We're going to be uh, having uh, a gift, free gift, for uh, every father that uh, attends the service. And I'm seeking the Lord about a message to encourage fathers. But I believe the message will encourage all of us. Amen. God bless you. Go out and win the world for Jesus. Tell somebody about Jesus. Amen.